Never make assumptions. Don't, because you never know. It's really hard to look at someone and look at them and be non-biased sometimes because we have biases, we all do. I'm gonna start this video with a short little story. So people fail classes, right? Students fail classes. If you are in a college or a high school, there are students that fail and you're just not aware of them because you're not the teacher. But the teacher often knows. Usually um, you can see if they failed a certain number of times, there's some type of indication on the records. For example, I could see if someone had already failed the class twice and it was their third try. So that's, that's a big deal. So one semester, I had a student who had failed an algebra class multiple times. So he had failed twice and this was his last try, right? And he came up to me after class and he talked to me, he introduced himself. He was a really cool guy. And he didn't look like a math person. And I didn't make any judgments, but I think a lot of people would because he was in really good shape. I mean, he was probably in better shape. Well, he's definitely in better shape than I was or I've ever been and probably in better shape than most of the people watching this video, to be honest. He was a professional at uh, being in shape. And let me just leave it at that. I don't want to um, say too much about him, but in great shape and not the kind of person that you think would be good at mathematics, right? Especially considering he failed twice. So he starts coming to my office and I like having him there, you know, because he's a nice guy. He's pretty cool and he's into working out. I like working out and, and he started doing math on the board in my office and I would give him a problem and he would do it. And the most remarkable thing happened. After showing this man or this student, I guess he was, you know, he was over 18, after showing him how to solve a math problem, he could go to the board and do it again. And I thought, whoa, it's like Goodwill hunting. <laughs> you know, this guy is really, really good. He's really good at math. And I couldn't figure out, and I still can't figure out, how he failed. How did he fail before? And so the first test comes around and this guy, you know, he takes the test and I think he got a B on the first test. Then after that, it wasn't just A's. He was competing with his classmates for the top score in the class. Needless to say, this guy was really, really good at math, right? And he didn't even know it. And that is the point of this video. If, if you're watching this video and you think you're not good at math, well, you might actually be pretty good. Also, it depends on the type of math, right? There are different types of math. So for example, um, if you are in an algebra class, you're doing algebra. And typically when you first see math in college, it's very algebra centric. So like you start with pre-algebra, you do intermediate algebra, you do college algebra, then you do pre-calculus, it's, it's all algebra. Then you do some trig, it's a little different, throws people for a loop. Then you jump into calculus, which uses algebra and trig, but it's still mostly algebra. There's other types of math. Now, I'm not saying you can be bad at algebra and be good at math, you need to learn algebra, but there's other types of math you might like better, right? There's discrete mathematics, right? There's statistics, there's complex analysis, there's topology, there's number three, there's all kinds of areas of math. And I think that well, probability theory, that's a different one, that's a good one. Different types of math appeal to different types of people. And I think that that can make a difference in your journey if you feel like you're bad at math. But I still don't know, I still don't know to this day, I don't understand how this guy did so well in my class, right? I, I, I don't get it, uh, how, how he was able to fail twice. And then, I mean, math genius, maybe. You know, and I encouraged this guy, here's the funny thing, I encouraged him to take more math classes. I thought, this guy's really good. I recommended him to the honors program. I think I walked him down there. I mean, this guy was really, really good. You know, hidden math genius, right? Maybe, right? Maybe he was a hidden math genius. I don't know what happened to him. I know he continued his, you know, bodybuilding career. And um, yeah, 
Yeah, it's pretty freaky. On the other hand, maybe it's because he actually did a lot of homework and studied a lot. I don't know if he didn't study when he took the class before, but he came to my office every day when we did math on the board. And he was, again, fun to have around, right? He'd do the problems and he'd get them right. I show him a problem, he would just learn like a sponge, right? Like a sponge, like a human sponge. You just show him something and he gets it. And and if you're like that, if if you if if you can if someone can show you math and you can learn it just like that, that that's a gift. That is a gift, my friend, because not everyone can do that. I mean, I've gone to my professor's office hours in the past when I was a student, and I remember walking out just as confused. I didn't understand anything. I was so confused, right? So if you actually get it when your teacher explains it, oh, that's amazing, right? That's amazing because I always had a hard time with that. And I've had students where I explain something and they'll kind of get it and they'll do it on their own and they want, they'll understand when I do it. But when they do it on their own, that's when they fall apart, right? That's when they fall apart. This guy, though, this hidden math genius, I mean, he would just spit it out. He was really good at logarithms too. And the thing is, in college algebra and algebra, logarithms are one of the hardest things you learn. You know, that's logarithms are actually the reason that I didn't even get an A in college algebra, right? I think I got a I got B. I got a B. That was my first B in college. College algebra ruined my 4.0. Logarithms ruined my 4.0. And then here I am, years later, you know, I've taught. <laughs> To classes right so but they did they ruined my 4.0 it's wrong so i understand the struggle i really do and this guy loved logs like, oh, i love logarithms he was he was enthralled by them because it's like this new construction right you have this exponential function and what do you do you create an inverse for it and it's called the logarithm right so you know the inverse of e to the x is the natural log of x the inverse of 2 to the x is log base 2 of x right so you have that relationship they're symmetric across that line y equals x Anyways, logarithms, beautiful stuff, and you can do a lot of cool stuff with them in algebra and in other classes. But for a student learning, they're a nightmare. But the hidden math genius, you know, I don't know, pretty cool stuff. Anyways, I just wanted to make this video to share this story because I think a lot of times people think they're bad at math and they're a lot better than they think they are. You know, when I walk into a classroom and I look at the students in the classroom, I just see potential, right? Because all these people have intelligence on, on varying levels. Some people are better than others. That's normal. Some people are better at math. Some people are better at English. Some people are better with their hands. That's okay. They all have this natural ability and they're all learning with that natural ability. Some will learn faster, some will learn slower, but they can all learn and they can all pass and they can all do well. And I always think if you can take all of the knowledge in that room and put it into one brain, you would rule the world because you would be so smart. You would have the knowledge of, you know, However many people are in the class, 30 people, 100 people. At the same time, at least how it works today, you know, if you want to learn math, we all know you have to struggle, right? If it's easy and you learn it, you don't really learn it. You have to think about it and you have to think about it for a long time or you have to really love it. You have to really like it, you know? That's how you really learn it. When you love something or when you struggle for it, when, there, when there's some emotion involved in the learning process, that's when it stays. So that emotion could be happiness. It could be, well, I guess it could be hate. You could hate the math problem. Then you're going to remember it too. But I, I don't recommend that. <laughs> uh, but usually the struggle, the struggle is what makes it stick. So maybe he was a hidden math genius. I'll never know. But to this day, I remember him. He was one of the best students I ever had. And because of that, right? Because how he just, he came from huge failure and he just rose from the ashes like a phoenix and did awesome. And that shows that you can do it. And I've got countless stories like this. This guy just sticks out because he doesn't look like a math person, right? The guy is in great shape. You know, if you saw him, you'd be like, oh, you know, he he, he just doesn't have that, you know, he doesn't look like, he doesn't have glasses. I don't have glasses either. But you know what I mean? It doesn't fit the stereotype. So yeah, don't judge. I didn't judge. I usually don't. I'm pretty good at that. But uh, yeah, really good at mathematics. Maybe you're good too. You never know. Anyways, if you want to learn mathematics, I do have courses. They can help you if you get them. Please use my links uh, from the description of this video or from my website, mathsorcerer.com. When you use the links, it does two things. One, it helps me. And two, um, I lowered the prices, so it should help you. I, I set the prices at the minimum uh, and they, they, they have some algorithm. I don't know how it works uh, and they price them, but it should be pretty cheap if you click my links. Also, check out my eBay store. Link is in the description and subscribe. Check out my other YouTube channel, The Internet Sorcerer. 
if you speak Spanish, check out my math chat, my math channel in Spanish, Math Source for Español. So check that out as well. I post there sometimes. I should post there more. I'm going to try to. But yeah, as always, keep doing math. And the key takeaway from this video should be that maybe you're better than you think you are. Yeah, maybe you are. I don't know. Good luck.